of the book Game Change made big waves started in Washington and quickly spread through the nation. It's an insider's look at the recent presidential election. And joining us now on the Roadshow are the authors, Game Change political reporters, John Heilman and Mark Halperin. Gentlemen, thanks for joining us this morning. Good morning, Vince. Uh, listen, you, from what I understand, you uh, interviewed some 300 people for this book, and uh, that's uh, phenomenal. Uh, I think you'd agree about that. Uh, one thing that struck me as we looked at the 2008 election was is that it seemed all but Hillary Clinton's game to lose. How did she lose it? In this book, I think you, th you talk about she lost it because of Bill Clinton. Well, there are, a lot of, there are a lot of complex factors involved, but certainly there's no question that uh, from the start, Hillary Clinton's candidacy was on a lot shakier footing than it looked. Um, we report in the book, I think one of the most important things that we report in the book is the way in which, despite the perception that Hillary Clinton was the establishment candidate who had all of the Democrats lined up behind her, mm -hmm. she was in fact someone that, that much of the Democratic establishment was terrified of, the prospect that she would win the nomination and then lose a disastrous, uh, uh, be, be caught in a disastrous loss in the fall of 2008, causing the Democrats to go down again, dragging Democrats down across the country. And one of the main reasons that they were concerned about that outcome was the fact that they had been hearing the, these I'm talking about Senate senior senior Democrats, particularly in the Senate, that they were concerned about her husband's personal life, and it was that those fears of his personal life exploding in her campaign, uh, destroying it, uh, that they started to look for an alternative, and eventually settled on the unlikely choice of Barack Obama. Yeah, when you talk about the unlikely choice, I mean you had several other candidates that were well established, and you have a uh, candidate here who is extremely inexperienced from Illinois, who dubs him the man that is now going to be the President of the United States. Well, Vince, he was incredibly well liked by his colleagues because they saw his power. They saw him go to places like Missouri and, uh, and Northern Florida and draw huge crowds, so-called red areas of the country, raise a lot of money, not just for himself, but for other Democrats. They didn't know that Barack Obama could beat Hillary Clinton. Again, these senior Democratic senators, they only knew that when they looked at people like Chris Dodd from Connecticut or John Edwards or the other people who were thinking of running, they didn't think any of them were capable of taking Hillary Clinton on. So they went to Obama quietly behind the scenes and said, look, we can't be for you publicly. The Clintons are too powerful. Hillary Clinton will probably win the nomination, they thought. But they said to Obama, you've got a chance to win this. We think you should run for president. That played a huge role in getting him in the race. And this behind-the-scenes story of what really happened, of what really encouraged Obama into the race, mm. has never been told before. So let's, let's switch sides now. Let's go to the Republican camp, and let's talk about John McCain. He is the front-runner there. Where in the world does he get Sarah Palin? Does she come well, from outer space? I'd never heard of her before. <laughs> well, you sort of. Uh, she came from YouTube in some respects. Um, you know, John McCain and his people were very pessimistic um, uh, throughout the general election. They knew that the mood of the country was anti-Republican. They knew that Barack Obama had a lot more money than they did and was much better organized than they were. They needed a big game changer uh, to try to shift the dynamics of the race. For a long time, we report in the book uh, for the first time, really, uh, that, that they were really settled on Joe Lieberman, Al Gore's running mate in 2000, the Democratic senator from Connecticut. They spent much of the summer of 2008 preparing the way to put that surprise pick on the mm. ticket. When conservatives revolted against that idea and told them that if they put Lieberman on the ticket, it would blow up the Republican convention, they shifted their focus at, at the very last minute and started gr desperately kind of grasping at straws. And they literally discovered Sarah Palin uh, on YouTube. Uh, top, top McCain advisors uh, we were looking for a, a, some uh, dramatic pick, and particularly a woman. They came upon an interview that she'd done on Charlie Rose. They thought she popped off the screen, and literally four or five days before McCain's self-imposed deadline, they put her name on the table, rushed her through a vetting process, uh, and she ended up on the ticket just like that. Gentlemen, thanks for joining us. It's a fantastic book, and I recommend anybody out there, if they want to find out what happened behind the scenes in 2008, to read your book. Thanks again. Thanks, Vince. Thanks, Vince.